Well, I'm working on a project. It's a nightstand. It has a lot of pieces in it. But uh, the turned parts, I think I'm going to start with those. It's going to have pineapple feet. It's going to have a finial, a fluted column, and another finial. That's on each of the front corners. On the back, it's going to have a quarter of each of those and a half of the feet at the back, okay? I've had this Shopsmith lathe duplicator now for about two years. I've made several projects on it. Really come to enjoy it. Uh, speaking about free hand turning first, uh, I probably do more spindle turning on it free hand than I do with uh, traditional lathe tools. I just find that it's uh, very, very easy uh, to turn those out. And if you want duplicates, well, if you get it set up right, you can't beat it for making more than one. So a good, the majority of the rest of this is going to be covering how to set it up and how I use it to uh, uh, make duplicate parts. But you'll find that... Uh, Shopsmith lathe duplicator. I've covered this on a few other videos, but Scott Markwood just put out a series of videos where he talked about uh, using this. Uh, this is a newer version than the one he covered, and there's a few things that are slightly different, but uh, it does the same job. I've been uh, working on some turnings, and uh, I'm right at the point now where uh, I'm going to do the, the last part on this spindle here. I've rough turned three of the four parts. Uh, so I thought I'd just go through the steps and show which cutters I use to do the different stages of uh, turning on parts and go through a little bit about some of the things I've learned about uh, well maybe not tips as much as they are uh, uh, controls for setting up this so that it will accurately translate or duplicate the uh, pattern that you have into repeatable parts that are are almost exact duplicates of uh, what you started with. But at any rate, where I'm at right now is I have the duplicator pattern rack set up so that uh, it's uh, uh, it'll do it'll do a part that is. Let's see how long is this part. It's about uh, 18 inches long. An eight, with an 18 inch long part, you wanna set it up so that, that this mount here is flush with this end, and this mount here is at or near the tip of the top rail. The top rail is adjustable. You just loosen the screw, you can slide it in and out. The bottom rail here will hold it in place, and of course it's attached to the uh, 
tubes of the shopsmith with a clamp on each end. But at any rate, that is set up. And one of the things that I do when I set that up is I make sure that these are perpendicular to the tubes, okay? And then uh, the part will fit into the lathe like this. Okay, and then the pattern will go up above. Now, there's two types of patterns, and I've, I've covered uh, flat patterns in a previous video. Uh, I believe this is the handle for the uh, uh, ship's wheel that I had to make uh, eight of. And uh, at any rate, this is set up so that it fits in here. Now, you'll notice that this is the center line of the part here. Okay, this is the center line of the part right here. And in this case, I have drilled a hole at the end that is in line with that center line. Well, if you'll look right here, you'll see there's a hole right here that is directly above the center line of the lathe. Okay? It's exactly above it. So if I take this part and install it so that that hole is there and tighten it down, then my part will be exactly centered over the center of the lathe. Okay? But I'm not going to be using a, a flat pattern. I'm going to be using a uh, three-dimensional pattern. And this pattern is set up so that the two different types of parts that I'm milling, okay, there's a different part there than this part here, okay? The two different parts that I'm milling, I have one on each end, and this is the part that I turned to start with. And I turned this completely freehand Okay, this is a pineapple foot, okay, and then this is a, uh, oh, I don't know what you call it, a spindle uh, part that goes with it, uh, right above the pineapple feet, there'll be a series of these and some fluted columns and some other stuff that'll be turned down, but at any rate, uh, the part that I'm going to be turning is going to be this one here, the pineapple foot. So what I need to do is I need to set that up so that that pineapple foot is directly above the raw, unfinished stock that I have it. By the way, this, uh, I just rough turned this till I got it round. I wasn't really trying to make it look pretty, just uh, get it in balance so that I could uh, start turning at one end and might work my way down, okay? So this is rough turn, and now I'm ready to do my first pass on this and get it down to size and kind of into shape. So I'll uh, set this up uh, after I get the cutter and duplicator itself set up. So let's go do that. Okay, so this is the duplicator cutter attachment. Okay. One of the things uh, that's very important in everything you set up on this is you want them to be plumb, level, and uh, vertically collinear to each other when they, you set it up. The uh, pattern and the part, the follower and the cutter. You want them to all be arranged. You'll notice there's a flat along here. Okay. That flat goes up and then all of this uses the standard 
most of this uses a standard uh, Shopsmith uh, tool. So if you tighten this and push it down on that flat, it'll settle itself in to where it's straight up and down. See that? Once you get that in place, pull it up just a touch so that it's not dragging. Tighten it down using the top screw. Then, you want to set this. I'm not going to be doing the final cut right now. So what I want to do is I want to make sure all of these are loose. And I'm going to back it off. About, let's call it Oh, I don't know, between, Scott said an eighth inch, I usually go about a sixteenth of an inch. Once I get it inside, about a sixteenth of an inch, then I tighten down the screw to hold it in place, okay? Do not tighten the center one at this point and they don't have to be real tight just snug them this will because this is barely touching it this will uh, make sure that this stays horizontal okay so it's not twisted okay and then just give it a little snug now mounting the cutter I'm going to be using a uh, round cutter to rough this and there's a positioner or a holder, whatever you want to call it here, that is essentially used for any of the cutters that have points on them or flats. but. I use it on the round cutter anyway. Oh, there it is. I use it on the round cutter, making sure that the bevel is up on the cutter. Okay. Let me get that screw started. Let's see, I'll need to have a different wrench for that. I think it'll use, no, it uses the same one. And that's an Allen head cap screw. Oop, fumble fingers. Okay, and I'll just tighten it in And then press this against it, hold it in place, tighten that one down, and tighten that one down. Now, I'm going to be freehand turning this to get it smooth and halfway down to size. It'll be a lot quicker than trying to uh, follow it. But to make sure I don't go too deep, what I'll do is I'll set this up with the round follower. And as I showed you before, the follower And the cutter need to be at the same alignment. It just so happens that, that, let me pull it back out and show you again, that this will let me return it to the same depth. As I said before, it won't turn. Well, maybe just a touch, but it won't turn uh, because of that flat that's on the top, 
and I'll shove it back until that is back. But if you take a look, when this is at zero right here, it puts the tip of it exactly where the tip of this will be. In fact, if you stack these up and you look down through it, you can see that this screw hole here and this screw hole here are perfectly in alignment, okay? So, let me tighten that up and just put it on there. I'm not worried about where it goes right now. I just want to put the follower into place. Oh, no wonder it won't tighten, duh. Okay, and that's good enough. It doesn't have to be too tight. The next thing is you need to make sure that this is exactly over the top of this. Okay, and we'll do that when we get to the... That's not the next thing. We'll do that when we get it over to the... Uh, uh, duplicator or to the table. Next thing is we want to make sure that this cutter right here is at the same height. Oh, I didn't tighten these yet. Is at the same height as the center of the spindle. Okay. When you're Cutting the spindle, you want this to the center of the spindle, and you want this in the center of the patent. Pattern. So let's go set that up. So here's my cutter. Here's the center of, <coughs> there's my lathe center, which will end up being the center, center of the spindle, okay? And I want to set them so that they're exactly the same height. If anything, you can be a little bit above center, but best results are to have it exactly at the center. Right there, they're the same height. Lock the table height in place right there, and now I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's set no matter which cutter I put on. The cutters are basically the same thickness and uh, that's ready to go. Now, let's set up the pattern. First, I'm going to install my spindle. And then I need to uh, install the spindle. Okay. And that's roughly where I need it. So let me get my wrench and tighten that up a little bit. I want to make sure that's square. I can use this top bar as my baseline. It is parallel to the table. Okay. And once I get it in place,
I can lock it. Now, the next thing is, I want to align my part with the available stock. Okay. Normally you can gauge from the end here, but in this case, I want to make sure that that this shoulder here is back in this material. I have more than quite a bit more material than I need, okay? So I'm going to set it so that this face here and this face here so that this is behind it, okay? To give, my, give me some room to work with. So I'm going to put it in here and let's see, that's probably have waxed that, but You're kind of in my way. Okay, so now I'll take a uh, longer square and make sure that the shoulder of my pattern is behind, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is almost a quarter of an inch of space behind this shoulder here where my part will start, okay? So that's where I'm going to leave my pattern. Each end of the, the pattern holder is set up with screws that allow you some left to right adjustment. I like where that's at, so I'm going to tighten this down, and I'm going to tighten this down, make sure that it's snug. And at the same time, I'm going to turn my pattern so that the face of it doesn't have any nicks or any defects that the pattern might pick up so that it's smooth and then I can lock it in place. Okay. So now I know that the center of this, the center line of this pattern, the center line of this are aligned Okay, that the end of the pattern will fit within the ends of material I have to turn. And I'm ready to set my pattern so that it can follow the part. Okay. And the way that I go about doing that is to adjust the height up and down, okay? So right now, I am below center. Let me come over here to another place on it where I can actually get to it. As you see, it's below center. Okay. So I'm going to raise it up until I get to 
the center line of the part. Okay. Okay, and it'll follow along like that. Now the only other thing I need to do is make sure that this is perfectly straight with the follower is perfectly in line with the cutter. You'll notice that there's a flat on the back of this and because I haven't used this, uh, I took this pattern off or these parts off a couple weeks ago and it's been moved around, make sure that I haven't done anything to get it out of adjustment. <clears throat> Let's adjust that and make sure that that's square. There are a couple of ways uh, to do this. One thing that uh, I've done is to align them along here, make sure that they are exactly at the same depth, okay? I can go across the cutters and it shows that the follower is to your left, my right. of the cutter, see the gap down here. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can come back here just a little ways farther and you can see that right here it's showing that it is swung to the side also, the same side. So what, what I do is loosen this and turn it until I get them in alignment, both touching the ruler. And tighten the screw. Now you normally only have to do this once. Because there is a flat on the back side here that will uh, keep it uh, registered so that it's always straight. So now I need to go back in and readjust my follower to the center line of my part. And I'll double check that, and it should still be square. And indeed, it is. So now, I need to go back through, check everything, make sure it's tight, and uh, I should be ready to start uh, uh, roughing this out. Okay, so I've, I have this roughed out, really rough. Uh, now I've put a uh, diamond shaped bit on. I have it all set up. It's still set in. The cutter is still set in about a 32nd of an inch so that uh, whenever I get the final detail, uh, so, so I can uh, make that as a final adjustment. 
Um, it's just the way I do it. Okay. So watch me as I go ahead and uh, detail this out. I do most all of my detailing with this diamond tool. I find that uh, the point of it works really, really well whenever you're trying to get down into uh, uh, pretty, pretty tight corners. But I also found that I can use the side of it to do a scraping. So if I am uh, uh, doing a bead, I can take that bead and make it just incredibly smooth using the side of that cutter. So you'll see that I have uh, point that uh, uh, duplicator just a little bit different than uh, a lot of folks uh, uh, will tell you that you're supposed to do it. But it works for me. Okay, so I have all these turned down. They came out pretty good. They're in sanding range. And I'll clean those up with some sandpaper. Um, they match the template pretty well. So the only thing I have left to do is to uh, separate the parts but, and size the tenons. I usually put the flat cutter on, put the flat cutter on, and then use it to size it because I want it uh, very accurate. And if there's any give in this, or if this uh, dimension happens to be off on there, then it won't fit well. This tenon has to fit into the bottom of the, or the base of the uh, nightstand and glue in there. So uh, I'll go ahead and put the straight cutter on and then I'll uh, take this off and saw the parts apart and sand the ends. Okay, so that uh, ends up giving me tenons that are just exactly the diameter I need on this part, this part, and this part. So now uh, I could take the parting tool and go ahead and thin those down, but uh, I have a flush cut saw that'll saw those pretty quick, and uh, that's what I'll do. So anyway. As far as the uh, laid duplicator goes, I agree with what Scott said about this is a great way for a person who is just learning uh, or someone like me whose grip is going uh, to be able to do some fairly fine work. Uh, I could, I could do these even better, but I've learned that uh, with sanding, uh, I can make all that clean up a lot quicker. But at any rate, uh, the, the duplicator itself is just a really handy tool for both uh, making parts. As I said, I made the uh, uh, template parts freehand, uh, or uh, making uh, parts from templates. So I got them sanded. Took about, uh, oh, probably 15 minutes. Okay. Got just a little bit more sand than do right in this area. But uh, I think that'll be good enough.
Well, <clears throat> I'm just about finished with this, but I thought I'd give you a few final thoughts on this uh, lathe duplicator. One thing is that this is the template parts that I made. And they're basically made out of some scrap, okay? But one of the things, one of the mistakes I made is that I didn't sand these, I just turned them. And you'll notice, I think you can see it, that there's a little mark right there, little little uh, detail that I didn't, didn't really uh, make clean. So as the follower comes along here, it bumps over it, okay? Like that. And I should have gone ahead and sanded. I should have made it perfectly smooth because on every one of these parts, you'll notice that it has that same bump here. It will copy those parts Almost exactly. In fact, if you measure the OD of this part here and the OD of this part right here, you'll find that before sanding that, that they're within five thousandths in every single dimension. In height and in diameter. Okay. So make sure when you make your templates that you make them nice and smooth. You'll notice in this one that it has a nice smooth transition that comes up here, okay? There was nothing to pick up on this, no real rough areas to pick up and translate into the, the uh, parts. So I'll spend a little extra time with uh, sanding down in there where it's hard to get to, but I'll spend extra time with sandpaper trying to get rid of that so I can smooth it out. Here's one here. And you can see that I got rid of most of all of it already. Got a little more sand than do on it. <clears throat> but at any rate, the uh, lathe duplicator is really a simple concept. It uh, has the capability of uh, making as many parts as you want that are exact uh, duplicates. And uh, when I made the bed and the chest of drawers, I didn't have it. I had to turn each part by hand using calipers to measure every single dimension. Uh, rulers, calipers, depending on which, anyway. I had to measure every one. With this, I only have to measure one, okay? Now think about that. How much time do you spend with a pair of uh, uh, calipers or a uh, micrometer or a, a rule of some kind trying to figure out just exactly whether or not you have the dimensions right? I get all that time back. And on top of that, it takes no longer for me to make these with the duplicator than it does for me to make them by hand uh, if you take out the measuring part. Making them by hand actually ends up taking longer and the parts are not exact duplicates. So, appreciate you watching and I hope you have nothing less than a wonderful day.